Hi, my name is Dr. Amatma Shah, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about what you need to consider before you have a baby. A lot of times, um, couples get together and they say, oh, we want to have a baby. Great. Let's go have a baby. Um, but there's, there's a lot that you could actually be doing to plan, um, to have a baby that's healthy and vibrant, um, and use the opportunity of what we call in the medical world, preconception or periconceptional planning, um, to really have a healthy child. So you don't want to just go ahead and get pregnant because obviously like, yes, you can totally do that, but um, there's a likely chance that your baby, your embryo as it's developing might have some nutritional deficiencies that um, would make it harder for the, the healthy development of all of its organs, its immune system, its cardiovascular system. So there are a lot of factors to consider. And um, there are a few easy things that you can actually do if you're planning on having a baby. So basically, as soon as you decide, actually, I would say even before you decide, as a woman, really, you can start um, planning for this when you are considering or you start seeing the little babies and you're like, oh, I really want one of those. Um, that's a really good time to start on um, preconceptional planning because you want to have enough time and energy invested into having a healthy child. And um, unfortunately, when you go to the medical doctor, your doctor is probably going to say, oh, you don't need to do anything. Or at the best, their recommendations are going to involve um, maybe to stop smoking, stop drinking, stop drinking coffee. Actually, most of them probably won't even recommend that. Um, but it could be one of the recommendations. So it's a lot of like, stop doing these things that you might be doing. Um, obviously, stop the use of drugs. Um, but there is very little that they're going to tell you in terms of nutrition before um, planning to have a baby. So you could take a prenatal. That could be an option. Um, unfortunately, like, yeah, prenatals are great, but um, there's a lot of prenatals on the market. Um, I'm actually going to do another video soon about um, what kind of prenatal to choose because there's a lot to choose from, um, and you want to get the right kind of prenatal. But um, even be be beyond um, having a prenatal, what do you do? So um, here are a couple of tips. Um, this is assuming that you have a standard American diet. So if you eat what the average American eats, um, there's probably huge uh, numbers of things that you can do to help support um, the healthy development of a child by just shifting your diet. If you, uh, I live in the Bay Area, <laughs> a lot of people that I work with um, that live in the Bay Area are actually super healthy already. So, um, these recommendations will also maybe help um, to, to kind of take it to the next level. So wherever you're at, just start with what you can start with, okay? Um, but my goal is to really, like, help you take it up a notch um, and to talk about why these nutrients are so important. Um, so one of the first things that I'll say is, um, you could cut out the fried foods. So French fries, potato chips, um, fried chicken, if you do that, um, whatever is deep fried, um, you want to eliminate from your diet. That said, you can probably, um, do healthier fats instead. So um, I am a believer that high fat diets are really good for fertility. So um, you just want to make sure that you're getting the right kind of fats. And there's a lot of debate about which is the best fat. Um, but 
it, overall, I think there's a general rule of thumb. And for me, I say if the fat is the less processed it is, the better it is. So, um, you know, you want to go for something like coconut oil or avocados, avocado oil, flaxseed oil. All of those are really great um, oils to kind of integrate into your diet. There's also a lot of science as to which oils are um, stable at which temperatures. So the problem a lot of times with deep frying or or even like high heat oven cooking is you are introducing a high amount of heat that could actually um, change the molecular structure of the fat and... Um, doing that will make it um, like less healthy because now this oil is oxidized or this molecular structure is oxidized, um, which basically makes it uh, way, way more inflammatory and way more, um, how do I say this, um, likelier to lead to negative impacts. So eating oxidized food, even like barbecued foods, um, oxidized foods in general are going to increase the oxidation levels in your body. And then your body uses up your free radicals, <laughs> your antioxidants, I should say, to fight these free radicals that are coming in through your diet. I hope that sort of makes sense. Um, so we want to get good, healthy fats. If you don't know, I should probably do another video on this. Um, focus on the, the fats that at their right temperatures, basically. Um, what else? We want to get lots of fruits and vegetables. And often one of the biggest things I find is fruits and vegetables kind of get grouped into one uh, grouping and unfortunately they're not made equal, right? So fruits, I would say are good antioxidants, um, and vegetables, I would say offer more minerals. So in general, the colorful fruits like berries, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, all of those are going to be really high in antioxidant levels. Um, However, you don't want to live on fruit. So eating like one to two servings of fruit per day is totally fine, totally reasonable, um, and will actually support your health. But I have a lot of patients, even patients that are seemingly doing well for themselves or eating healthy diets, um, end up eating four to five servings of fruits per day. And um, that's a problem. So that degree of eating fruit will actually work against your fertility. It also, like the instability that the fruit causes in your blood sugar levels um, is really not supportive to your fertility. So stay um, like one to two servings of fruits per day. And, um, and then focus on the vegetables and really you want to get a variety of vegetables. You want to get colorful, like different varieties of colors. Um, that's a really easy way to do it. So when you go into the grocery store, make sure your basket is full of, um, a ver variation of reds and greens and purples and pinks, um, whatever variety of colors that you can find, the better. Um, and then if you, if you already do that, you want to take it to the next level, um, where you can start to focus on more organic fruits and vegetables. And, um, I just saw an article this morning, um, in the men's health magazine that says, um, oh, organic uh, fruits and vegetables have, or organic food in general has no more benefit or, um, no more nutritional content than non-organic. And actually, this isn't true. <laughs> there are multiples of studies that say that head-to-head -head will compare a head of broccoli to a head of organic broccoli and um, show that there's a different level of um, profile of nutrients because you literally have 
um, the soil, the soil which um, produces that broccoli is if it's mineralized, if it's organic, if they, if the farmer has put in nutrients, extra nutrients into the growing process, that broccoli is going to suck it right up and, and you're going to be absorbing all of those nutrients into your body. So yes, organic makes a difference. If you have the ability to do organic, um, I think it's a huge benefit. Um, if you can't afford it, then it's fine, at least do the fruits and vegetables. So, um, and then there's also the middle path. So, um, there's a list called the dirty, dirty dozen. Um, if you are like, well, I sort of want to do organic, but I can't afford everything organic. Um, the dirty dozen is a good place to start of, um, foods that you can get rid of, um, because they're on the dirty list or there's a, a clean 12 list. So that, dozen of fruits and vegetables which are not um directly sprayed or high in in the pesticide content will serve you better so um those are really like high fat high fruits and vegetables um and then the other recommendation i would say is um if you are going to have a healthier lifestyle. That lifestyle would obviously include cutting out alcohol. Um, I am, I, I kind of take the middle path. So, um, do you have to cut out alcohol altogether? Probably not. It really is dependent on your age and your hormones. So there's more to more nuance to it than everyone needs to be off of alcohol. But there are cases where, um, women can drink wine and, and be completely okay with it because their hormones are, um, compensating or are, um, balanced enough that a glass of wine once a week or once a month isn't going to throw it off that much. So you could be one of those women. It's hard to say. Um, in general, the recommendation is cut out the alcohol. Um, but what to put instead of it, um, definitely don't put in a bunch of fruit juice to replace your alcohol. That would be really bad. Fruit juice, actually, I should say fruit juice and, um, even dehydrated fruits, like dried fruits, um, concentrate the amount of sugar and, um, that will have even a, a more destabilizing effect on your blood sugar. So you want to stick to water. If you don't like the taste of water, um, you can add some lemon to it. I'm, I'm a big fan of, I've been really not liking water lately. And um, so I've been adding like cucumber slices or strawberry slices, whatever um, fruit or, or vegetable I'm in the mood for, I kind of just put it into my water and have that like little natural flavoring to the water. Um, you don't want to flavor your water with too much other than that. Um, because you want, the water is actually going to help support your fertility. So you want to make it that, um, the water really makes, a, a kind of, um, significant improvement to where your fertility is and your hormones are going to function better. Your ovaries are going to have more blood flow and circulation if you're drinking the right amount of water. So water is probably one of the most important things you could be doing, um, to help support your fertility. So those are my tips for you. There's more where that came from. So I might do a part two of this video. Um, and that's all I've got for today. Uh, have a great day and I'll see you next time.